Welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter D, and that means that we're going to be looking at dendrochronology. Now, in order to explain this method, first of all, I must tell you a story. Earlier today, I was on my way to buy the latest issue of the current archaeology magazine. I was enjoying the sights and sounds of the day, and generally having a nice walk. When all of a sudden, what should I come across but a piece of wood in the road? Like most people, the first thing I wondered was, how old is this wood? So, how can we date this piece of wood? Well, unfortunately, this piece of wood is too small uh, to be dated using dendrochronology. But the question is, why wouldn't I use, for example, carbon dating on a piece of wood? Well, there are various reasons. First of all, it may simply be too expensive. Carbon dating isn't the cheapest method to employ, especially if you're just a, a lonely archaeologist. Um, secondly, actually, all of the, the, the material, the living material within it, the carbon, may actually have been replaced long ago. Uh, it can be waterlogged wood, or it can actually be wood which has been um, uh, is going through the process of becoming petrified. So carbon dating doesn't always, or isn't always, a practical method to use. And that's where dendrochronology comes in. For every year that a tree is alive, it adds an extra ring to its trunk, and by slicing a tree in half, we get a sense of how old the tree is. Once a tree is cut down, it ceases to grow. It's this central truism upon which dendrochronology is based. By counting the rings, we get a sense of how old the tree is. Now, so long as we actually have uh, adequate samples covering different periods of time, we can actually stretch this timeline back. Not every year is the same, and this is very clear when we look at the tree rings of a tree. On a dry year, the ring may be thin. If there's been a fire, the ring may be black. And bit by bit, we're able to get a sense of the many different years and how each year has affected the tree. By comparing samples from different trees, we're able to gradually map backwards in time by using certain years as overlaps. So like the pattern on a jigsaw puzzle, we're able to get a sense of the depth of time covered by all these different trees by comparing where there are commonalities in the rings. What can be dated using this technique? Well, almost anything that's been made out of wood. Dendrochronology is most commonly used to date buildings, though it's worthwhile remembering that it's not the date of the building's construction which is given, rather the date when the tree was felled. Almost any wooden object can be dated using this technique, providing no enough rings to count. So, for example, Viking ships have been dated using dendrochronology. But probably the most famous maritime craft to be dated was the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's flagship, which sank in the Channel. So, uh, as we've seen, dendrochronology is an extremely useful method. Um, it can be used to date almost any piece of wood, as long as you have enough rings to count. Um, and it's uh, thanks to the hard work of many countless of uh, dendrochronologists around the world, we have an excellent um, increasing floating timeline, which means that every single time you get a, another little section, you can pin it onto earlier sections and you get a deeper and deeper history of tree growth through time. So very useful. So that's been D, dendrochronology. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to comment below. Uh, if you'd like to send me a message, please do. Um, <clears throat> naturally, please do subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to follow us on Facebook, uh, all you need to do is, f is type in Archeosuit Productions, click like, and uh, anything of interest that I find um, may go on to there instead of going on here. I may not have time. So, thank you very much.